Nimrod, Hebrew, Nimrwid modern, Nimrod, Tiberian, Nimrod, Aramaic, Nimrod Arabic, Almerd and Namrud, a biblical figure described as a king in the land of Shinar Assyria, Mesopotamia, was, according to the Book of Genesis and Books of Chronicles, the son of Cush, therefore the great-grandson of Noah. The Bible states that he was, "...a mighty hunter before the Lord and began to be mighty in the earth." Extra-biblical traditions associating him with the Tower of Babel led to his reputation as a king who was rebellious against God. Attempts to match Nimrod with historically attested figures have failed. Nimrod may not represent any one personage known to history, and in reality is more likely a conflation of several real and fictional figures of Mesopotamian antiquity, including the Mesopotamian god Ninurta, the Akkadian kings Sargon and his grandson Naram Sin BCE, and Tukulti Ninurta I BC of the Middle Assyrian Empire. Biblical account The first biblical mention of Nimrod is in the Table of Nations. He is described as the son of Cush, grandson of Ham, and great-grandson of Noah, and as a mighty one in the earth, and a mighty hunter before the Lord. This is repeated in the first book of Chronicles 1.10, and the land of Nimrod used as a synonym for Assyria or Mesopotamia, is mentioned in the book of Micah chapter 5 verse 6, And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod in the entrances thereof, thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian, when he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders. Genesis says that the beginning of his kingdom were the towns of Babel, Erech, Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Mesopotamia Gen 10 10, understood variously to imply that he either founded these cities, ruled over them, or both. Owing to an ambiguity in the original Hebrew text, it is unclear whether it is he or Asher who additionally built Nineveh, Rezin, Rehoboth Ir and Kalah both interpretations are reflected in various English versions. Sir Walter Raleigh devoted several pages in his History of the World c. 1616 to reciting past scholarship regarding the question of whether it had been Nimrod or Asher who built the cities in Assyria. Topic: <laughs> Traditions and Legends. In Hebrew and Christian tradition, Nimrod is considered the leader of those who built the Tower of Babel in the land of Shinar, though the Bible never actually states this. Nimrod's kingdom included the cities of Babel, Erech, Akkad, and perhaps Kalna, in Shinar J1010. Flavius Josephus believed that it was likely under his direction that the building of Babel and its tower began. In addition to Josephus, this is also the view found in the Talmud Chulin 89a, Pesahim 94b Arabin 53a, Avoda Zara 53b, and later Midrash such as Genesis Rabbah. Several of these early Judaic sources also assert that the king Amraphel, who wars with Abraham later in Genesis, is none other than Nimrod himself. Since Akkad, Babylonian Akkad was destroyed and lost with the destruction of its empire in the period 2200-2154 BCE long chronology, the stories mentioning Nimrod seem to recall the late early Bronze Age. The association with Erech, Babylonian Uruk, a city that lost its prime importance around 2000 BCE as a result of struggles between Isin, Larsa and Elam, also attests the early provenance of the stories of Nimrod. According to some modern-day theorists, their placement in the Bible suggests a Babylonian origin, possibly inserted during the Babylonian captivity. Judaic interpreters as early as Philo and Yochanan ben Zakkai, 1st century AD, interpreted a mighty hunter before the Lord. Heb. Gibber Zaid Li Yao Gibber Said Lip, Ne Yahweh, lit. In the face of Yahweh, as signifying, in opposition to the Lord. A similar interpretation is found in Pseudo Philo, as well as later in Symmachus. Some rabbinic commentators have also connected the name Nimrod with a Hebrew word meaning rebel. In Pseudo Philo, dated ca. AD 70, Nimrod is made leader of the Hamites, while Joktan is leader of the Semites, and Fenech is leader of the Japhethites, are also associated with the building of the tower. Versions of this story are again picked up in later works such as Apocalypse of Pseudo-Methodius The Book of Jubilees mentions the name of Nibrod, the Greek form of Nimrod only as being the father of Azurad, the wife of Eber and mother of Peleg 8 
This account would thus make Nimrod an ancestor of Abraham, and hence of all Hebrews. Josephus wrote, Now it was Nimrod who excited them to such an affront and contempt of God. He was the grandson of Ham, the son of Noah, a bold man, and of great strength of hand. He persuaded them not to ascribe it to God, as if it were through his means they were happy, but to believe that it was their own courage which procured that happiness. He also gradually changed the government into tyranny, seeing no other way of turning men from the fear of God, but to bring them into a constant dependence on his power. He also said he would be revenged on God, if he should have a mind to drown the world again, for that he would build a tower too high for the waters to reach, and that he would avenge himself on God for destroying their forefathers. Now the multitude were very ready to follow the determination of Nimrod, and to esteem it a piece of cowardice to submit to God, and they built a tower, neither sparing any pains, nor being in any degree negligent about the work, and, by reason of the multitude of hands employed in it, it grew very high, sooner than any one could expect, but the thickness of it was so great, and it was so strongly built, that thereby its great height seemed, upon the view, to be less than it really was. It was built of burnt brick, cemented together with mortar, made of bitumen, that it might not be liable to admit water. When God saw that they acted so madly, he did not resolve to destroy them utterly, since they were not grown wiser by the destruction of the former sinners, but he caused a tumult among them, by producing in them diverse languages, and causing that, through the multitude of those languages, they should not be able to understand one another. The place wherein they built the tower is now called Babylon, because of the confusion of that language which they readily understood before, for the Hebrews mean by the word Babel, confusion. An early Arabic work known as Kitab al-Magal or the Book of Rolls part of Clementine literature states that Nimrod built the towns of Hadanian, Elisar, Seleucia, Cte Siphon, Ruhan, Atropatine, Telalan, and others, that he began his reign as king over earth when Reu was 163, and that he reigned for 69 years, building Nisibis, Raha, Edessa, and Haran when Peleg was 50. It further adds that Nimrod saw in the sky a piece of black cloth and a crown. He called upon Sasan the weaver and commanded him to make him a crown like it, which he set jewels on and wore. He was allegedly the first king to wear a crown. For this reason people who knew nothing about it, said that a crown came down to him from heaven. Later, the book describes how Nimrod established fire worship and idolatry, then received instruction in divination for three years from Buniter, the fourth son of Noah, in the recognitions R4. 29. One version of the Clementines, Nimrod is equated with the legendary Assyrian king Ninus, who first appears in the Greek historian Tejas as the founder of Nineveh. However, in another version, the homilies H9-4-6, Nimrod is made to be the same as Zoroaster. The Syriac Cave of Treasures CA 350 contains an account of Nimrod very similar to that in the Kitab al-Magal, except that Nisibis, Edessa and Haran are said to be built by Nimrod when Reu was 50, and that he began his reign as the first king when Reu was 130. In this version, the weaver is called Sisson, and the fourth son of Noah is called Yontan. Jerome, writing ca. 390, explains in Hebrew questions on Genesis that after Nimrod reigned in Babel, he also reigned in Iraq, Iraq, that is, in Edessa, and in Achad, Akkad, which is now called Nisibis, and in Chalan, Kalna, which was later called Seleucia after King Seleucus when its name had been changed, and which is now in actual fact called Cte Siphon. However, this traditional identification of the cities built by Nimrod in Genesis is no longer accepted by modern scholars, who consider them to be located in Sumer, not Syria. The Giez conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan ca. 5th century also contains a version similar to that in the Cave of Treasures, but the crown maker is called Sintal, and the name of Noah's fourth son who instructs Nimrod is Barvan. However, Ephraim the Syrian 306 relates a contradictory view, that Nimrod was righteous and opposed the builders of the tower. Similarly, Targum Pseudo Jonathan date uncertain mentions a Jewish tradition that Nimrod left Shinar in southern Mesopotamia and fled to Assyria in northern Mesopotamia, because he refused to take part in building the tower, for which God rewarded him with the four cities in Assyria, to substitute for the ones in Babel. Perk de Rabbi Eliezer c. 833 relates the Jewish traditions that Nimrod inherited the garments of Adam and Eve from his father Cush, and that these made him invincible. Nimrod's party then defeated the Japhethites to assume universal rulership. Later, Esau grandson of Abraham, ambushed, beheaded, and robbed Nimrod. 
These stories later reappear in other sources including the 16th century Sefer Hayashir, which adds that Nimrod had a son named Mardin who was even more wicked. In the History of the Prophets and Kings by the 9th century Muslim historian Al Tabari, Nimrod has the tower built in Babel, Allah destroys it, and the language of mankind, formerly Syriac, is then confused into 72 languages. Another Muslim historian of the 13th century, Abu al fida relates the same story, adding that the patriarch Eber an ancestor of Abraham was allowed to keep the original tongue, Hebrew in this case, because he would not partake in the building. The 10th century Muslim historian Masudi recounts a legend making the Nimrod who built the tower to be the son of Mash, the son of Aram, son of Shem, adding that he reigned 500 years over the Nabataeans. Later, Masudi lists Nimrod as the first king of Babylon, and states that he dug great canals and reigned sixty years. Still elsewhere, he mentions another king Nimrod, son of Canaan, as the one who introduced astrology and attempted to kill Abraham. In Armenian legend, the ancestor of the Armenian people, Haik, defeated Nimrod sometimes equated with Bel in a battle near Lake Van. In the Hungarian legend of the enchanted stag, more commonly known as the white stag for Zarvas or silver stag, King Nimrod, aka Menrod, and often described as Nimrod the giant or the giant Nimrod, descendant of one of No's most wicked sons, Cam. References abound in traditions, legends, several religions, and historical sources to persons and nations bearing the name of Cam or Cam, and overwhelmingly, the connotations are negative, is the first person referred to as forefather of the Hungarians. He, along with his entire nation, is also the giant responsible for the building of the Tower of Babel, construction of which was supposedly started by him 201 years after the event of the Great Flood see biblical story of Noah's Ark. After the catastrophic failure through God's will of that most ambitious endeavor and in the midst of the ensuing linguistic cacophony, Nimrod the giant moved to the land of Evilit, where his wife, Enna gave birth to twin brothers Hunor and Magyar a.k.a. Magar. Father and sons were, all three of them, prodigious hunters, but Nimrod especially is the archetypal, consummate, legendary hunter and archer. Both the Huns and Magyars' historically attested skill with the recurve bow and arrow are attributed to Nimrod. Simon Kazai, personal court priest of King Ladislaus the Cuman, in his Gesta Hungarorum, 1282 85. This tradition can also be found in over 20 other medieval Hungarian chronicles, as well as a German one, according to Dr. Antal Endry in an article published in 1979. The twin sons of King Nimrod, Hunor and Magar, each with 100 warriors, followed the white stag through the Miatis Marsh, where they lost sight of the magnificent animal. Hunor and Magar found the two daughters of King Dull of the Alans, together with their handmaidens, whom they kidnapped. Hungarian legends held Hunor and Magyar aka Magar, to be ancestors of the Huns and the Magyars Hungarians, respectively. According to the Miholjanic legend, Stephen V of Hungary had in front of his tent a golden plate with the inscription. Attila, the son of Benducci, grandson of the great Nimrod, born at Engedi, by the grace of God King of the Huns, Medes, Goths, Dacians, the horrors of the world and the scourge of God." Nimrod figures in some very early versions of the history of Freemasonry, where he was said to have been one of the fraternity's founders. According to the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the legend of the craft in the old constitutions refers to Nimrod as one of the founders of Masonry. Thus in the York Miz, number 1, we read, At ye making of ye Torre of Babel there was a masonry first much esteemed of, and the king of Babylon Y.T. called Nimrod was a mason himself and loved well masons. However, he does not figure in the current rituals. The demon Nyariki, figuring in the Finnish Kalevala as a helper of Lemminkainen, is associated with Nimrod by some researchers and linguists. Topic. Evil Nimrod versus the righteous Abraham A confrontation between Nimrod and Abraham is said to have taken place, according to several Jewish and Islamic traditions. Some stories bring them both together in a cataclysmic collision, seen as a symbol of the confrontation between good and evil, and or as a symbol of monotheism against polytheism. On the other hand, some Jewish traditions say only that the two men met and had a discussion. One, according to K. van der Torn and P. W. van der Horst, this tradition is first attested in the writings of Pseudo Philo. The story is also found in the Talmud, and in rabbinical writings in the Middle Ages. In some versions, as in Flavius Josephus, Nimrod is a man who sets his will against that of God. 
In others, he proclaims himself a god and is worshipped as such by his subjects, sometimes with his consort Samiramis worshipped as a goddess at his side. See also Ninus. A portent in the stars tells Nimrod and his astrologers of the impending birth of Abraham, who would put an end to idolatry. Nimrod therefore orders the killing of all newborn babies. However, Abraham's mother escapes into the fields and gives birth secretly. At a young age, Abraham recognizes God and starts worshipping him. He confronts Nimrod and tells him face to face to cease his idolatry, whereupon Nimrod orders him burned at the stake. In some versions, Nimrod has his subjects gather wood for four whole years, so as to burn Abraham in the biggest bonfire the world had ever seen. Yet when the fire is lit, Abraham walks out unscathed. In some versions, Nimrod then challenges Abraham to battle. When Nimrod appears at the head of enormous armies, Abraham produces an army of gnats which destroys Nimrod's army. Some accounts have a gnat or mosquito enter Nimrod's brain and drive him out of his mind a divine retribution which Jewish tradition also assigned to the Roman Emperor Titus, destroyer of the temple in Jerusalem. In some versions, Nimrod repents and accepts God, offering numerous sacrifices that God rejects, as with Cain. Other versions have Nimrod give to Abraham, as a conciliatory gift, the giant slave Eliezer, whom some accounts describe as Nimrod's own son. The Bible also mentions Eliezer as Abraham's majordomo, though not making any connection between him and Nimrod. Still other versions have Nimrod persisting in his rebellion against God, or resuming it. Indeed, Abraham's crucial act of leaving Mesopotamia and settling in Canaan is sometimes interpreted as an escape from Nimrod's revenge. Accounts considered canonical place the building of the tower many generations before Abraham's birth as in the Bible, also Jubilees, however in others, it is a later rebellion after Nimrod failed in his confrontation with Abraham. In still other versions, Nimrod does not give up after the tower fails, but goes on to try storming heaven in person, in a chariot driven by birds. The story attributes to Abraham elements from the story of Moses's birth the cruel king killing innocent babies, with the midwives ordered to kill them and from the careers of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who emerged unscathed from the fire. Nimrod is thus given attributes of two archetypal cruel and persecuting kings, Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh. Some Jewish traditions also identified him with Cyrus, whose birth according to Herodotus was accompanied by portents, which made his grandfather try to kill him. A confrontation is also found in the Quran, between a king, not mentioned by name, and the prophet Ibrahim Arabic for Abraham. Muslim commentators assign Nimrod as the king. In Ibrahim's confrontation with the king, the former argues that Allah God is the one who gives life and gives death. The king responds by bringing out two people sentenced to death. He releases one and kills the other, as a poor attempt at making a point that he also brings life and death. Ibrahim refutes him by stating that Allah brings the sun up from the east, and so he asks the king to bring it from the west. The king is then perplexed and angered. Whether or not conceived as having ultimately repented, Nimrod remained in Jewish and Islamic tradition an emblematic evil person, an archetype of an idolater and a tyrannical king. In rabbinical writings up to the present, he is almost invariably referred to as Nimrod the Evil. Hebrew. Nimrod. Nimrod is mentioned by name in several places in the Baha'i scriptures, including the Kitab i Icon, the primary theological work of the Baha'i religion. There it is said that Nimrod dreamed a dream, which his soothsayers interpreted as signifying the birth of a new star in heaven. A herald is then said to have appeared in the land announcing the coming of Abraham. Nimrod is also mentioned in one of the earliest writings of the Bab, the herald of the Baha'i faith. Citing examples of God's power, he asks, has he not, in past days, caused Abraham, in spite of his seeming helplessness, to triumph over the forces of Nimrod? The story of Abraham's confrontation with Nimrod did not remain within the confines of learned writings and religious treatises, but also conspicuously influenced popular culture. A notable example is, Quando el rey Nimrod, when King Nimrod. One of the most well-known folk songs in Ladino, the Judeo-Spanish language, apparently written during the reign of King Alfonso X of Castile. Beginning with the words, When King Nimrod went out to the fields, looked at the heavens and at the stars, he saw a holy light in the Jewish quarter, a sign that Abraham, our father, was about to be born. 
The song gives a poetic account of the persecutions perpetrated by the cruel Nimrod and the miraculous birth and deeds of the Saviour Abraham. Full original text and an English translation appear in the Ladino Wikipedia article. Topic. Islamic narrative According to the Islamic narrative, Abraham seems to have a series of discussions with Nimrod. The Quran states, "...have you not considered him who had an argument with Abraham about his Lord, because God had given him the kingdom i.e. he was prideful?" Abraham says, "...my Lord is he who gives life and causes death." The king answers, "...I give life and cause death." and brings forth two men sentenced to death. He frees one and condemns the other. Then Abraham says, Indeed, God brings up the sun from the east, so bring it up from the west. This causes the king to exile him, and he left for Levant. Although Nimrod's name is not stated in the Quran, it has been held by Islamic scholars that the king mentioned was him. According to Mujahid, four people gained control over the earth, east and west, two believers and two disbelievers. The two believers were Solomon and Dual Karnain, and the two disbelievers were Nebuchadnezzar and Nimrod. No one but they gained power over it. Topic: <laughs> Text of the Midrash Rabbah version. The following version of the confrontation between Abraham and Nimrod appears in the Midrash Rabbah, a major compilation of Jewish scriptural exegesis. The part in which this appears, the Genesis Rabbah chapter 38, 13, is considered to date from the 6th century. <laughs> <laughs> Historical interpretations Historians, Orientalists, Assyriologists and Mythographers have long tried to find links between Nimrod and real historically attested figures in Mesopotamia. Since the city of Akkad was destroyed and lost with the destruction of its empire in the period 2200-2154 BC long chronology, the stories mentioning Nimrod seem to recall the late early Bronze Age. The association with Erech Sumero-Akkadian Uruk, a city that lost its prime importance around 2000 BC as a result of struggles between Aizen, Ur, Larsa and Elam, also attests the early provenance of the stories of Nimrod. Several Mesopotamian ruins were given Nimrod's name by 8th century AD Arabs, including the ruins of the Assyrian city of Kalhu, the biblical Kala, built by Shalmaneser I (1274–1244 BC). A number of attempts to connect him with historical figures have been made. The Christian bishop Eusebius of Caesarea as early as the early 4th century, noting that the Babylonian historian Barassus in the 3rd century BC had stated that the first king after the flood was Euchoios of Chaldea, identified him with Nimrod. George Synchelus c. 800 also had access to Barassus, and he too identified Euchoios with the biblical Nimrod. More recently, Sumerologists have suggested additionally connecting both this Euchoios, and the king of Babylon and grandfather of Gilgamos who appears in the oldest copies of Alien c. 200 AD as Euakoros, with the name of the founder of Uruk known from cuneiform sources as Enmerker, in 1920, J.D. Prince also suggested a possible link between the Lord of Murad and Nimrod. He mentioned how Dr. Kraling was now inclined to connect Nimrod historically with Lugal Banda, a mythological king mentioned in Pobol, Historical Texts, 1914, whose seat was at the city Murad. This is supported by Theodore Jacobson in 1989, writing on Lugal Banda and Ninsuna. According to Ronald Hendel the name Nimrod is probably a polemical distortion of the god Ninurta, a prominent god in Mesopotamian religion who had cult centers in a number of Assyrian cities such as Kalhu, and also in Babylon, and was a patron god of a number of Assyrian kings. Nimrod's imperial ventures described in Genesis may be based on the conquests of the Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I Dali et al., 1998, p. 67. Julian Jaynes also indicates Tukulti Ninurta I a powerful king of the Middle Assyrian Empire as the origin for Nimrod. Alexander Hislop, in his tract The Two Babylons decided that Nimrod was to be identified with Ninus also unattested in Mesopotamian king lists, who according to Greek legend was a Mesopotamian king and husband of Semiramis, with a whole host of deities throughout the Mediterranean world, and with the Persian Zoroaster. 
The identification with Ninus follows that of the Clementine recognitions, the one with Zoroaster, that of the Clementine homilies, both works part of Clementine literature. There was a historical Assyrian queen Shamoramat in the 9th century, the wife of Shamshi Adad V, whom some speculations have identified with Samiramis, while others make her a later namesake of a much earlier Samiramis. In David Roll's theory, Enmerker, the Sumerian founder of Uruk, was the original inspiration for Nimrod, because the story of Enmerker and the Lord of Arata see smiley face, bears a few similarities to the legend of Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, and because the car in Enmerker means, hunter. Additionally, Enmerker is said to have had ziggurats built in both Uruk and Eridu, which Roll postulates was the site of the original Babel. George Rawlinson believed Nimrod was Belus like Nimrod and Ninus a king not attested in Mesopotamian annals, but claimed by the later Greeks to have been a king of Assyria based on the fact Babylonian and Assyrian inscriptions bear the names Bel Nibru. The word Nibru in the Akkadian language of Assyria and Babylonia comes from a root meaning to pursue or to make one flee, and as Rawlinson pointed out not only does this closely resemble Nimrod's name but it also perfectly fits the description of Nimrod in Genesis chapter 10 verse 9 as a great hunter. The Belus nimrod equation or link is also found in many old works such as Moses of Korin and the Book of the Bee. Nibru, in the Sumerian language, was the original name of the city of Nippur. Joseph Poplicha wrote in 1929 about the identification of Nimrod in the First Dynasty or Arukigal Levin 2002 suggests that Nimrod was a recollection of Sargon of Akkad and of his grandson Naram Sin, with the name Nimrod derived from the latter. He argues that the biblical Nimrod, then, is not a total counterpart of any one historical character. He is rather the composite Hebrew equivalent of the Sargonid dynasty, the first, mighty king to rule after the flood. Later influence modified the legend in the Mesopotamian tradition, adding such details as the hero's name, his territory and some of his deeds, and most important his title, King of Kish. The later editors of the Book of Genesis dropped much of the story and mistakenly identified the Mesopotamian Kish with the Hamitic Kush. Literature <inaudible> 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 In the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, written 1308-21, Nimrod is portrayed as a giant, which was common in the medieval period. With the giants Ephialtes, Antaeus, Briarius, Titios, and Typhon, he stands in chains on the outer edge of Hell's circle of treachery. His only line is, Raffle my amesh zabi almi, words whose unintelligibility emphasizes his guilt for the confusion of languages after the Tower of Babel. In The End of Satan by Victor Hugo written 1854-1855, Nemrod is the sword symbol of war, attempting to reach the skies after having destroyed the earth. This unfinished text tries to compare biblical text and historical events, making out of the taking of the Bastille a nearly religious theme. In The Matlock Paper by Robert Ludlam written 1973, the protagonist, James Barber Matlock, an English professor in his thirties, is recruited by the Department of Justice to investigate a drug smuggling ring led by a mysterious figure named Nimrod. In the Kate Daniels series by Ilona Andrews written 2007 present, the protagonist, Kate Daniels, is the last daughter of an immortal who was originally known as Nimrod, builder of towers. In the film The Bible, in the beginning, 1966, Nimrod is portrayed by the actor Stephen Boyd. Topic. Idiom In modern American English, the term is often used sarcastically to mean a dimwitted or a stupid person, a usage first recorded in 1932 and popularized by the Looney Tunes cartoon characters Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, who both sarcastically refer to the hunter Elmer Fudd as Nimrod. As an ironic connection between Mighty Hunter and Poor Little Nimrod, i.e., Fudd. See also Nimrod Fortress References Citations Topic Sources Topic External Links Nimrod Entry in the Jewish Encyclopedia 
Against World Powers, a study of the Judeo-Christian struggle in history and prophecy, modern Christian writings which follow David Roll's view on the legends of Nimrod. Another page from this site summarizes Roll's theory of Nimrod and Enmerkar. <laughs> 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 Topic: Roll's 